Okay, so we're ready. Welcome back the Dead Daisies to Linea Rock, Radio Lombardia, Milano. Uh, a Thank pleasure you. to have you here. Actually, you. exactly one year ago, today, you were here. No You were way. playing Milan with Whitesnake and you were here in our studio. Alcatraz, so, was it? Yes, that's that's right. Alcatraz, yeah, which yeah, is yeah, very yeah, close yeah, to yeah. here. So yeah. One year today, so it's amazing <laughs> so meanwhile you had some changes some lineup changes within the band um so the, the family yeah. extended mm -hmm. once again the, fa <laughs> <laughs> we, the family extended that's yeah. a good way of putting it yeah. absolutely the yeah. family extended and uh, a lot of, of tour dates all around the world meanwhile and a brand new album new which album. came out make some noise um the title track in particular is about live experiences is that correct it's yeah pretty much i mean when we did it we wanted to just kind of i think doug was we were in the studio and he's like man we need an anthem you yeah. know just some sort of and we kind of sat down and all worked on it but it seems to be working to be honest with you in a lot of different formats <laughs> not just concerts it's actually working in there's a few soccer teams that are interested in it. Some uh, American okay. football teams, NASCAR, uh, NASCAR yeah, in America. Cool. So it's kind of it's kind of growing into its own thing. There's also another song. Uh, Last time I saw the sun, which is about life <coughs> on the road. If I got it right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I mean is that the point that you want to state is that the essence of this band is actually the show, the live performance. I. I th I think so. I mean, we're really proud of the records, obviously. Um, I think the records, the songs are great, and the, the, the sound of the record is awesome uh, with Marty Fredrickson and, and, yeah. and the players we have. But I think it's it's becoming a little bit more... Um, um, the live shows have the become live shows more focused. Are, yeah, people yeah. come to see the band on the premise of the record, and then they walk away and they go, wow, the live show was awesome. It was, fun. It was really yeah. good. It was fun. Sometimes it's too much fun. <laughs> yeah, we, we are. Sometimes you cross a few lines, but you know what? At, uh, at the end of the day, honestly, the fan, that's what the fans remember, yeah. you know? We've all been in so many bands where the music is just slamming, and there's no connection between the band and the audiences, or very little connection. I, I'm a fan of connecting, breaking that wall, and just having fun. Yeah. We are the party, but the fans make the party. And without the fans enjoying what we're doing up there, it's just... That's the difference, you know, so people remember, they've been talking about that more and more, right? You know what's cool, I see about being a part of this, this band is that um, every show is pretty, is kind of unique in its own way. It's really, you could see the show three times and it would be three different, you know, they're all, they're all kind of, you know, we're playing the same parts and everything, but it just, it, we just kind of play off each other and it, and it just goes yeah. into a, a fresh director every, every night. It's really cool. Yeah. Instead of, in, as, you know, Instead of doing the exact same thing, the yeah. exact same position, same everything every night, that would get boring. This has been really, I mean, we've done a lot of shows. Yeah. We're this year alone, really we, God, we haven't counted, but I would say something like 12,085. <laughs> 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 Not really. That feels like it, but but when you're having like, fun, who's counting, you know? And uh, that's because one show, like uh, one show value, one counts four, five. That's yes, why. Okay, exactly, so yeah. that's why you come to it. Well, since the beginning, <laughs> we've been we haven't we haven't stopped, right, David? Really this is our founder of, right here, David Lowy. <laughs> is, is the guy. That, he's, the that's boss, his fault. The boss. <laughs> he's he's the reason why we are here. Capo de tutti, capi. Yeah, right here. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I haven't seen you know so much energy and power on a stage since a long, long time. So it would be you. a pleasure to see you again tonight. <laughs> okay, so um, the the record actually shows very different influences from ACDC to Aerosmith uh, to the blues, everything. Is that because, you know, you're actually, of course, a bunch of experienced, you know, musicians, but you also have maybe different influences and origins and that comes together to the Dead Daisies? Or you're so, just <coughs> actually looking for the path that I you... I grew up in Australia. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, obviously, I've got a lot of influence from ACDC and another band called The Angels, which I... Yeah very much part of uh, from time to time and that very much influenced me and everybody comes from where they come from and the idea is with this band bring your influences that's what we want 
and then let's mix them all together. Yeah, long way to go actually. It's, it, came, it, it came from uh, from DL bringing the riff, and it was you know it was uh, reminiscent, saluting the angels and yeah. stuff like music from that era. But also, we're all music fans still. I mean, these guys. Me, not so much. I get tired. But these guys <laughs> sit around, man, and they compare and they talk. And Brian, they're like analyzing this and that. It's like, wow, we're still fans. So we're still kids in our hearts. You know, we're still uh, big fans of rock and roll. So after so many years, you, you can't but to bring, you know, the people you love. You know, you grew up with, we grew up with the same band, the same same musical. Yeah, I was like very, the 70s. Big, very big into the Osmond Brothers. And <laughs> Justin Bieber, Diane Marie, uh, Diane Marie, yes, Diane yeah. Marie. <laughs> Bee Gees were awesome in the seventies. But we got it know. today. <laughs> Bieber, man. Bieber, Bieber, Bieber is. I'm a oh, believer. I'm actually, a believer. Actually, he is as talented kid. Anyway, but we're fans. We're still fans, you know, of uh, rock and roll. Since you're mentioning it, actually, on the record, make some noise. There are two cover versions. One is. Fortunate Son from CCR and uh, the other one from The Who joined together. Why did you pick those songs in particular? And why actually two cover songs well, since you have so much material of if, yourself? You know, honestly, um, I think I, I, I can't speak for all of the. I'm pretty sure though you guys have done two like yeah, two we covers. Put covers on most. It's been part of. We like uh, to do that. Yeah. We put it on the other albums as well. Mm -hmm. We think that's a good thing to do. I mean, you're not limited to the 38 minutes of a, an LP anymore. So a few songs that you really love, the band plays, yeah. people get to know them, they like them, and we love to play them. So, yeah. The, the other reason is connecting with the audience again. You know, uh, when you have a new band uh, and you're, you've got a bunch of new songs, no, ma no matter how good they are, and some of the fans might know them, it's good to grab something that everybody knows. You okay. play it and then you grab them, you bring them, the, yeah. bring them on board, you know. But since I've been with you guys, it's, you've, it's traditional. <coughs> like, hey, it's a Dead Daisies tradition to play a couple of. And, uh, and, covers. and it's and it's funny too because, as popular as those songs are with us, there's a lot of people that don't know who did the original the versions. Kids, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So last year we did Midnight Moses, and I had so many people write to me. And say, man, that's a great song, you know. Or, in another way, some people go, man, what a great song. But what the hell does, you know? I want to be a forest ranger screaming, danger, 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 me. <laughs> and I'm like, I want to be a forest ranger, and I want to watch, you know, Lost in Space with the robot, you know, whatever. <laughs> but you know, a lot of people don't know. I, I even for this record, I did a, um, I did an interview before we went on tour from my house, from uh, I forget. Uh, newspaper uh, entertainment writer and the woman was not you know I don't not a knock but she wasn't young she was probably my age you know what I mean no idea that join together was a who song no not a clue really oh my God. and so it in some way you know uh, David likes to do them because it's fun it's fun for us um, it is to a point connecting throwing something to the audience that they may have heard before yeah you know but in, a, in another way it's just a tip of the hat for us and our people that we grew up listening to and I hate to say educating people but maybe in some way yeah educating and yeah, going hey th point. if you like us <laughs> if you like Doug from his time with White Snake or Dio well, check this song out. This is what he grew up listening to, or this yeah. is what Marco grew up listening to. Yeah. The other way, you know, the short answer would be yes. <laughs> 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 okay, you win, Doc. I have, I have, are I you, have are you coming answer. tonight? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. I don't know, but she's breathing pretty heavy. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Whoa. Okay. And did you have to fight to choose the songs, or actually you, you joined together and oh, for the God. decision? <laughs> It's no, very we much consensus. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I like to do it. Like, if someone's really against something, I don't like to do it. Let's, if we can all, all more or less agree, that's a good. Thing. And at the end of the day, like once we start playing it, we know. Yeah, like if we, if we play and it sounds good and it works, yeah, then okay. you know, you know what I mean. So for some reason, and and it's happened, I'm sure to all of us at some point or another with other bands. There's been, there's great. There's, there could be some great songs that you record in the studio or something. And you bring them out, and for some reason, I have no idea what, they just don't translate. They don't hook up with 
mm. the audience, you know, and it could be played exactly like it, they've been recorded, but this is part of what it is, you know. The live formula is different than the recording formula, you know. You mentioned the producer, which is Marty Fredrickson. Yes. Uh, how was working with him? And actually, the sound uh, seems sharper and brighter this time um, without actually losing its bite and kick, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. But uh, was that a precise choice? Did you call him from, for Marty, a particular reason? I think we've all known Marty for... I've known Marty since I was in The Scream. His band, he, he played in a band that opened for the scream on a few shows on the west coast and um i've kind of you know been friends with him like but i've kind of watched him go from that then he produced some stuff for brother kane yeah and then motley and aerosmith and he's just grown into this great producer and songwriter um so for us it was you know, it was kind of a double a double treat. You know, we were getting someone who was really good at producing bands, but also another great songwriter that, you know, when we had ideas and we took them as far as we could go, Marty could come into the room with fresh ears and eyes and go, this is really cool, as it is, or this is really cool, but I think if you did this as a songwriter, it just kind of made it blossom that much more. You know, so he's great. I love working with the guy, and he's super mellow. He's got a he's got a system. A lot of us didn't understand it in the beginning, but it works. The record obviously sounds great, and he actually got a lot of us out of our comfort zone. Um, I, I I know for me, singing, I'm normally in another room yeah. looking back, and this time I was literally he was sitting at the board, and I was right here with him, and he was just tapping me and I you know and we were talking and it was really quick I loved working with him yeah. that way it was it was I mean I was knocking a whole song out in, in like an hour and a half mm. so it was really cool to work with him that so, way so I you mean that he did the gentlemanly way I mean not as maybe some other producer which actually have Dictate. the attitude to you know they want you to do something and they insist and maybe they have the tough, you know, approach. And no, he's, Marty's, he's gentle, Marty's very so persuasive. He's, he's very persuasive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. He's quiet. Yeah. He's kind of cool. He's, he's, kinda, he's kind of just like, so you say what you want, and he goes, yeah. We could do that yeah, way. but. <laughs> no, he would say, we could, we could try it that way. You know how I did it with Steve mm. Tyler was, uh, I did it like that. Uh, okay. okay we'll somebody, that somebody, has, somebody has to be in charge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was him. Okay. Yeah. But he, he's, he, he, gets, he gets the best out of you. But he's not, uh, he's not abrasive about it. At all. You know what I mean? He's okay. got this, like Doug was saying, he's got this weird backdoor way of getting okay. you to do what he wants you to he do. He enables it's you really to cool. see his point of view. Okay. <laughs> very smart. Okay. Yeah, very smart. Okay. And he was great. Thank you, Marty. You did a great job. We love you, Marty. Okay, so Doug, when you came into the picture, the songs were already written, or you did act, actually have, you gave your contribution to songwriting? We all we all work together on everything. We that's one of the thing that's really cool about this band is that um, well, first of all, when they called me, I'll, I'll just make a short story. They called me about doing joining the band to make a record. Mm. So that was the first thing that was like that's enticing because you're not joining a band that's going to tour on a record that somebody else been on. Yeah. This way, I was going to be on the record. We were going to write from scratch, everybody. And that's what's cool about the band is we do everything together. And we were recorded together, we wrote together, everybody was involved. The first day we sat down, there was f six of us with guitars, just, just sitting in a circle playing. Uh -huh. And everybody threw out ideas and everybody checked their egos at the door. Because we're all friends, you know, so... Um, me and David had spent, we, I never met David until th that point, which is, which is a little bit scary, but we had talked a few times on the phone now for, for long periods of time to know that he and I were going to gel no problem. But I'd never written with John, although I'd known him for years. Mm -hmm. And we, we all took each other's ideas and took them the best, and it was great. You know, because I've done other situations where you write with just one person and you do it together and it's yeah. just me and you. And you get great stuff that way, but it's really cool. When you bring an idea and I go, hey, that's pretty cool, and then he takes it and goes, hey, what if you do it this way? And then he goes, I like it with an upstroke, and then all of a sudden it's improved by you know 500%. So it was great, and yes, I was 
I, we all wrote everything together and, Good. and recorded together. Yeah, we do everything together, including bathing, which is still creepy <laughs> after two years. That's anyway, that's, that's, a whole okay. other, that's a whole other interview. That's another story. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to take a bath. I'm sure, Doug, that you didn't have to audition, actually, because everybody knows. Yeah, but how, how does it work, actually, in this band? I'll tell you how it works. This is how it works. Everyone's got their own way of, of putting, putting you through a little bit, like a college hazing thing, where they kind of, tr they kind of mess with you a little bit. Mm -hmm. David is, is very clever. He's a, he's a very clever guy, and he, he kind of threw me some twists musically. I was like, wait, I'm not sure I like this guy right now. He's trying to mess with me. Marco pretends he's my best friend, <laughs> but I don't know. I kept buying him lunch all the time. <laughs> Karabi, he didn't talk for the first week. He just ha has glasses on like that. He, I'd say, "What do you think about this?" And he would just look at me and then, he, then like smoke. Come I'll out. say it like this. So, what do you think about this? I'm just like, all right, whatever. <laughs> okay, I'm not even gonna try. I'm not even gonna try with him. But um, Brian, Brian, actually, was quite normal. He just. He just I'll, I'll say this now that to this, um, you know, when you have a cat like Doug, yeah, who's been around, uh, we all we've heard him. Um, some of us have spent time with him musically and all that. He's a friend. He's a human being. He's a father. He's a great husband. He's a great musician. Great guitar player. He looks amazing. He's amenable, easy to work with. I mean, no, but it's true. <laughs> more, These more, more. These are all the factors <laughs> that work into the equation because there's some cats that aren't easy to work with, yeah. and he's not one of those guys. Well, so I'm, I'm not perfect by No, no, that, nobody yeah. is, but but we knew coming in that it was going to be a, a very cool, uh, you know, mixture, and, and we would get along well. Uh, we knew that. We, we I got to say, last thing, and then I'll, I'll shut up, is that... I was really proud of what we accomplished in a short amount of time. David really kept us focused. You know, we had a lot of music, and he goes, let's, let's keep, all right, for today, let's finish this, this, this. And then at the end of the week, we, we had a list, and then he goes, okay, let's do a vote. So we, 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 I mean, we kicked ass. Yeah. Like, yeah. In a very short amount of time, we came up with, with some really cool stuff, and, uh, and then knocked it out together. Is this actually very different than anything you've done before? Even if you've since been part of another collective, which was the rock ball, but that's a different story. You don't have to ask everybody, but for me, since I was a kid, really, I haven't been in this type of situation. Because mm. so. it gets, you know, when you get into bands, well, I mean, like White Snake, that's David Coverdale. Yes. You know? And so I was basically helping him achieve his goal. This was just, I don't know, it felt like if we were playing in front of somebody's garage, it wouldn't surprise me because it might happen one day. We were like, guys, we got this great opportunity to set up out in the street in front of the house and, and we'll play. And, you know, I'd be like, cool, let's do it. Yeah. That's what are you doing, your kids? <laughs> and John, what about you? Actually, when you got the call, you know, with so many talents and big names within the band, did you have any doubts, you know, right over when when they called you actually, thinking, you know, oh God, no, this could be just like Wrath or Motley Crue? Uh, well, I mean, honestly, when they called, M Marco knows because he's the one that called me. Okay. Um, when he called, I initially said, <laughs> I just said no. Really? Um, I, 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 you know, Marco was like, hold on a minute, you know, let, let me, you know, seriously, before you make any decisions, just come out to LA, meet everybody. And you it know, was like just, you were busy. You had I, a lot of stuff. Yeah, I, I have. Yeah. I have my. I have a solo band as well. Yeah. Back in America with my son, commitment on yeah. drums, and I had some shows. And and he was like, "Hey, we got this thing." And I'm like, "Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm kind of busy. You know, da, 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 whatever." And he goes, "Look, just come to California and check everything out." And, and I slept so, with him, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, but, finish. <laughs> I was the pitcher, not the catcher. <laughs> anyway, um, just clearing that up, folks. I'm just letting you know at home. Anyway, um, they, uh, there's a joke here. I'll tell you later. But um, no, I just I went out to California. I heard the stuff online. He said, "Oh, we got this band, the Dead Daisies." <clears throat> And honestly, I went into my house, and my guitar tech just happened to be there. And I'm like, Dad, did you ever hear this band called the, the Dead Daisies? And he's like, yeah, dude, they were just on tour with Kiss and Def Leppard. So I go, 
Okay, so I looked them up, yeah. checked it out, the songs, and I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. And then I said, all right, I talked to David, the manager, and I said, all right, I'll come out. And for me, my biggest thing is I, I, I really don't care about anything at the end of the day. Like, I had never, I knew Marco, never worked with him. Knew Brian, never worked with him. Knew Doug. Well, at the time it was Richard, but I, I, I knew a lot. The only guy in the band that I had ever really worked with mm -hmm. was Dizzy. And that was fun. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember anything. anything. <laughs> but, I, you know, so I just wanted to go, like, regardless of how good everybody can play or how, uh, you know, where they were playing or who they were opening for, it didn't really matter to me. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't dealing with a bunch of just crazy egos. Mm -hmm. I, I've kind of dealt with this before. Yeah. With Motley, yep. and also with that Monster Circus thing I did in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. all these different people come in, and everybody thinks that they're the guy that everybody's coming to see. Okay, you know what I mean? And it's just weird. Like I just don't like that, and I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to be a situation where a month in or two months in, I was just going to like hate what I was involved in. You know, so obviously I'm still here two years later, and, so. and everything's cool. <laughs> because everybody comes to see John. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind and of we obvious. All know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of obvious. <laughs> okay, so with Richard and Dizzy back to Guns N' Roses for the reunion, you found new guitarist with Doug, but no keyboard player. What that uh, actually was that a choice well, that you made? This is irreplaceable. Okay, so that's why. It. <laughs> really simple. So you mean he will be back? No, I mean this is the band. Okay. This, this, this lineup, this is the Dead Daisies. You know, the, the band's actually been going for four years, and like all bands, they go through evolution over time. Different people uh, change. There's different opportunities come about, and different directions take place. But this is the, this is the Dead Daisies now, and we hope to be around for a long, long time, making music for a long time, recording new music, playing live music. Since the Dead Daisies is a collective of musicians, as we already said, um, that it's since 2012, um, you changed a lot of lineup. Actually, Wikipedia mentions that you have 10 ex-members in the band. Already. It's not correct? No. No, okay, that's false. I'll tell you why. Yeah. When I first got involved with the guys yes david was very aware of the fact that having people like marco brian doug all these people involved in this thing that obviously there may be some scheduling conflicts where marco already had okay. a tour book to blah, sure. blah blah whatever so a lot of the names that are on the uh, wikipedia yeah, based, are like yeah. for instance last year we went to australia with kiss mm-hmm a week before we left, Richard was in a motorcycle accident and he broke his collarbone and ribs. Oh. So he couldn't do the tour. Mm -hmm. So instead of cancel the whole tour, David made a phone call to uh, your friend from Baby Animals. Yeah. Uh, Dave Leslie. Dave, Dave Leslie. Leslie. Mm -hmm. And we gave Dave the songs. We said, can you do this? He said, yes. He came in. He filled. Now he's on the list. He's, okay. a, he's a member. Yeah. But there's a lot of those names that are just people that filled in for one, well, maybe well, five shows. Or guests who came to the odd gig. Also, the nature of things today is that, uh, you know, the show's got to go on. Yeah. And uh, sometimes we all just can't be there at the same time for a whole host of reasons. And we, wanna, we, we, we don't want to have to cancel the show because somebody uh, can't be there for some reason. So we have had guests, people from time to time. But as I said, this band evolved like every other band members change over time. And you look at any band and the early iterations of most bands are very different from the band that, that eventually evolves. But is this still a family also for the ex-members? Do you keep in yes. touch? Uh, are oh, they big family. friends We're still? Friends. Okay. Oh, yeah. We're friends yeah. with all, every, every one of them. Yeah, yeah I'm still good. friends with, with John Stevens. I see him from time to time. Okay. He's doing his solo thing in Australia. Daryl, yeah. Daryl stays in touch with us. Daryl yeah. Jones, good bass player. Dizzy, Dizzy, yeah. uh, Dizzy, Dizzy, Dizzy Richard. Dizzy all and Richard. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. But yeah. at the end of the day in America, we say, um, you know, there's, there's five parts to this band, the Dead Daisies. But uh, there's, a, there's a, a phrase or a quote where it says, the sum is greater than the parts. Okay. The whole yeah. is greater than the sum of the parts. Thank you. That's <laughs> what I meant to say. 
Yeah. <laughs> I've been practicing my Italian for you too. What's with all these? Okay. What's with all these freaking questions over there? Forget about it, please. This is not Italian. Okay. Oh, this is, this is American okay. Italian. Okay. Uh, so y you played with a lot of bands. You opened also for them, like Bad Company, Lena Skinner, Aerosmith, Kiss. Def Leppard, ZZ Top, Wisenick, did you remember all of them? Mm -hmm. uh, how was the reaction of the people, uh, especially in the beginning, you know, when <coughs> maybe they didn't know the band and they didn't expect to see so many known faces? Well, and were the KISS fans the most die-hard? Because usually, you know, they want KISS and that's it. No, the KISS fans have been amazing. Oh, really? Um, Very supportive. Actually, uh, to be honest with you, um, when we toured, all the tours that we've done with KISS here in Europe, um, last year, Australia, yes. and even in America, we were, we were finding that, um, you know, most of the time when the opening band starts playing, you know, everybody's in the concourse buying t-shirts or whatever, yeah. and, and we'd start playing, and then all of a sudden, the house would be full, you know, so... They've been very, very supportive of us. Uh, we're, we're meeting a lot of the KISS fans now, again, because at the end of the night, we do a little signing. Sure. So they come and they say, oh, I saw you here last year with KISS, or I saw you with Whitesnake, and God, you guys were awesome. So it's, it's been very, very cool for us. The, the KISS cruisers have been oh, relentless. They've just been yeah. following us everywhere we go. Yeah. And how is this tour with the answer going? Is the key, you know, is classic actually the key to it? Because you you both bands that, you know, classic rock bands, so. But you know what's funny? Uh, who were we, you, it was you were we talking last night on the way home from the gig. You were saying that you played with somebody and you look out into the audience in the past, you played mm -hmm. with somebody and look out in the audience and it was a bunch of old dudes. Uh-huh. Oh, I won't and mention who it was. So. Now. <laughs> Now, we're, 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 both bands are kind of classic rock bands, and we're looking out into the audience, and it's... New generation. There's, right like, now. young girls, like, you know, 18, 19 years old. Wow. There's young dudes. There's older people. It's, it's pretty cool. There's a, 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 a wide variety of people there. You know what I mean? So... I can only talk to the older people though, because my ankle bracelet blinks when I'm around the younger <laughs> what, what girls. Is it farm animals? Yeah, farm animals. <laughs> it's weird. It's a it's a it's a form of in reintroducing cla what rock, classic rock used to be. You know, maybe today we're flying that flag. You know, but the, to answer your question, to answer yes. your question about the answer, <laughs> those guys, those it's a really cool combination because they're, they're they're really different than what you know. The, the two bands are doing the same kind of music, but. Um, it's like it's not like we're stepping on each other's toes they're they're doing their thing we're doing our thing and together it's really cool we're flip-flopping every night yeah. so um you know depending on what night it is we'll go on and the next night they'll go on first and we'll go on first it's been great they're good guys and they got a new record out that's really cool yeah i really like it and uh so at least both bands are it's classic rock but we've got material new material that yes. we're supporting I was, you know, mentioning classic as the genre, you know, that's yeah. what I meant. Last question for today. So you've been to Cuba, uh, and actually the Revolution t title came, actually was inspired by that trip. Mm -hmm. uh, you told me the last time, so I remember. And how do you see now, you know, that country after Fidel Castro death? And how do you see the United States led by Donald Trump? Ooh. <laughs> we hey, hey. Where, where's your restroom? Simple decisions. How about them Dodgers? <laughs> I'll give you the short answer. Okay. Yes. <laughs> short answer is maybe. Maybe. The short maybe. answer, the short answer and I think we all agree. The bottom line, Trump got there through due process. He is our president. We should support him and, and expect him to you know, produce for us. He's gonna. I have all the faith in the world that he's gonna better our situation in the U.S. As far as Fidel Castro, there's people that love him. There's people that are happy that he's gone. Yeah. When we went to Cuba, we had nothing to do with politics. We went there to celebrate music and life, and the people were just wonderful. It was just a great experience. We, we, we want to go back. We're talking about maybe going back. 
soon. We're hoping, right, David? We'll, we'll see. Yeah, you. we want to go back to Cuba. We had a, a wonderful experience there, and people love music there. Yeah. And that, that's we just may be doing it on an Australian visa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Ah, I'm making a No, everything's going to be good. <coughs> okay. Let's hope. Okay, thanks very much, guys. Thank and you. you can make an invitation to the people to come to the show tonight. So this is the camera. This one. This one over this here, one, Marco. This one over here. Okay. okay. That so one's not right. even plugged in. <laughs> You've been talking to it all night. I didn't have the heart to tell you. <laughs> huh? Oh, no, no, yeah, we want to invite you to come this uh, mm. that the dances we play at Magazine General. Estacera, we'll see you soon. We'll have a great time, the answer. Piacere. And Grazie. Alla prossima. And you're also coming back to Italy in mid-December for some other dates, so oh, everybody's yes, yes, welcome yes, yes. also there. That's so. right, we're coming to Treviso. Yes. And... Uh, Grotta Mare. Grotta Mare, okay. si yes, I've never okay. been, never been. That's going to be great. Thanks very much, guys. Yes. Thank Looking you. forward Thank to you. see you tonight. Ciao. <laughs> Ciao.